bit about non-compliance. Non-compliance happens most often when you give either a task or a demand, uh, or a task or demand is required of your child, and the child um, does not follow through with your instruction. Um, when you see a decrease in, in non-compliance, um, it's because there's oftentimes an increase in reinforcers. If there is an increase in non-compliance, then you need to give more reinforcers. And we're going to talk a little bit about today about how to reinforce, when to ignore, what to ignore, when to intervene, and really how to manage this non-compliance so that your child will comply with you and you can then teach the skills necessary for your child uh, to catch up with some of those developmental delays uh, or play delays or whatever the case may be. So using reinforcers. Oftentimes you want to use reinforcers to keep a child in a task. Um, let's say you're at the table and you're trying to, to practice a particular skill that you, you know there's a deficit. You need compliance so that you can teach that new skill and your child can then generalize to, to other environments. So and when that's the case, you want to reinforce very big. Um, even if your child tries, if your child doesn't complete the task perfectly or doesn't do exactly what you asked them to do, it's still important that you reward the attempt uh, to comply. So reinforce big, and you want to find those strong reinforcers. Um, when a child has reduced or, or you know motivation to complete a task, oftentimes a child will attempt to escape the task. Escape uh, is uh, is another form of noncompliance. When that happens, you want to decrease your demands, or reduce your demands, or quicken your pace with whatever skills you're working on, shorten the amount of time, so that your child doesn't uh, escape the demand. That can turn into a game. So I'm gonna